Mr. Tupper. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony today. Uh, we appreciate both the chairwoman and the ranking member for coming together in a bipartisan manner to host this hearing. Uh, this is a, definitely a producer issue. Uh, it's not a partisan issue, so we thank you. I'm privileged to be here representing cattle producers and independent meat processors across the U.S. This hearing is critical because there is a crisis in rural America. We are losing our producers at an alarming rate, all the while watching big corporate feeders, packers make record profits with the threat of vertical integration hanging over our head. As cattle producers, we are natural stewards of the land. These family farms, ranchers work day in, day out to produce a high quality protein product in a safe and sustainable way. As we sit here today, producers in my state and across the country are enduring devastating drought conditions. This is just one of the many challenges cattle producers face year in and year out. All the while managing the land, borrowing money to keep the operation running, fighting drastic shifts in weather, and dealing with the rising input costs and a fallen bottom line. Most ranchers who sell their calves at weaning time are selling those calves for less than $1,000 a head. That's somewhere near $100 a head profit after all input costs and amounts to less than a 1% return on investment, an incredible risky business. For those who raise and sell all the way to fat cattle, calving to finish, a finished steer is worth somewhere around $1,600 a head today. Packers could buy that steer, process it, and sell it for beef alone, not counting byproducts, for over $2,800 a head today for a gross margin profit of over 80%. We as cattle producers understand and want the packer to make money. That makes the whole system work. But since 2015, corporate packers gross margin has ballooned from an average of $100 to $200 a head to well over $1,000 a head. Packers have enjoyed unbelievable profits, harvesting around 120,000 head per day, while cattle producers go out of business and consumers pay double or even triple at the meat counter. Cattle producers, when they make money, they reinvest in their local community, buying and upgrading equipment, paying more for feeder cattle, reinvesting in the land through conservation practices. The corporate packer does not reinvest in the industry or sometimes even in country. Of the four companies that harvest about 85% of the U.S. fed cattle, two of those, JBS and National Beef, are owned and operated outside the United States and Brazil. The main goal of these corporations is not to reinvest in our land or our people, but to create value for their shareholders. Not to mention, the big four packers are also heavily invested in our direct competition, plant-based and lab-grown alternative proteins. The packers in increased control of supply of cattle solely committed to one packer has made it nearly impossible to have active price discovery. In my years as an auctioneer and operating St. Ange Livestock, I've learned the most important participant in true price discovery is the second bidder. In most cases in the fat cattle trade today, we don't have a second bidder. There are simply not enough market participants. In traditional market times, it was assumed when box beef prices rose, the packer would ramp up chain speed to increase profits. Instead, they're using limited chain speed and shackle space to increase profits and make the same money or more harvesting less cattle. So producers see huge losses in equity while the packer reaps all the rewards despite having the least amount of risk and owning the product the least amount of time, while exploiting producers and ultimately the consumer. American cattle producers don't want, nor are we looking for a handout. We just want a fair and equitable playing field, staffed by a referee with a whistle and a flag. Producers cannot be sustainable or generational without being profitable. Building a safe and secure food supply starts with ensuring the success of our food producers. These cattle markets are very complex. We know this, but when there is an oligopoly with four packers controlling the industry, there are only two ways to level the playing field. We can either work to eliminate the occurrence of anti-competitive practices and market manipulation in the meatpacking sector, or as we've seen done in the past in other industries, we can break them up so they cannot have as much influence or ownership in the market. We don't take these challenges lightly. We believe these are critical times. The United States Cattlemen Association, of whom I am testifying on behalf of today, is fighting to secure our food supply system, our rural communities, and our members, and our members' livelihoods. 
My graduating class in Kimball, South Dakota, 100 miles down the road from Senator Thune's hometown, was 32 in 1991 in rural South Dakota. Just a few weeks ago, in Kimball, South Dakota, they had 19 graduates out of that same high school. They've also combined in athletics. The towns haven't shrunk, but the rural areas and, and the cattle producing areas have. So I thank you for your time and I appreciate and look forward to any questions you may have.